is we're going to write that down. This is called the zeroth law of thermodynamics. Okay, and I'm very, uh, very seldom going to write this entire word thermodynamics out uh, all the time. I'm just doing it here because it's our first section, but I'll, I'll abbreviate it as thermo or something as we go along. So try to understand it as we write it on the board, and if you don't, we'll, we'll make it straight here in a second. Okay, if bodies, bodies can be anything, a Coke can, an ice chest, a car, anything with, you know, with mass and volume, if bodies A and B, so we have two bodies A and B, are separately in thermal equilibrium. We'll explain what all this stuff is in a second. With a third body and that third body is, is just going to be labeled C, then A and B are in thermal equilibrium. Here I go with the definitions. This is how I'm going to write equilibrium so I don't write that out every time. Thermal equilibrium with each other. In physics you're always going to be dealing with bodies A and B. A body here, a body here. Everything's written in terms of the real world so it's what, was, what we're doing here. Okay, What it's saying is, let's just read it. If bodies A and B, I have two things here, two separate things are in a separately in thermal equilibrium with a third body C. Now what does thermal equilibrium mean? Okay, There's a lot of terms in physics. Thermal means what you might think, heat, Okay, something related to heat, something related to temperature will get more rigorous as we go. Okay, Equilibrium means, the word equilibrium means no changes, nothing is changing any longer. Okay, If I uh, you know, have a mouse trap, okay, and I've got the thing sprung back with the cheese there, Okay, and then I trip that cheese, that mousetrap is going to start to flip over. Well, as it's moving, it's, it's definitely not in equilibrium. I mean, it's moving, moving, moving. Eventually, it's going to snap and hit the board. The mousetrap's going to flip around. Eventually, it's going to come to rest. After that point, it's in equilibrium. Nothing's changing any longer. That's all equilibrium means. When something is in thermal equilibrium with another body, it just means that there's no more heat transfer between them. You might have a hot body and a cold body, and you stick them together. Yeah, some of this heat is going to move over here and warm up the colder body, but after a long time, that's going to be done. It's just like taking an ice cube out of a tray. It's going to melt. It's going to reach room temperature. After that point, it's in equilibrium. So we have bodies A and B are in thermal equilibrium with a third body here. Then these two bodies that we initially had are in thermal equilibrium with each other if we place uh, them in thermal contact. So what does that, that mean in terms of, of a picture? Uh, pictures are very important in physics, and so we're going to do that here. So here we have a, a, um, a body, and we're going to call that body A. Okay, And that guy that we said here is in thermal equilibrium with another body C because originally it says if bodies A and B are in thermal equilibrium with a third body C. What this means is that uh, these guys are in thermal equilibrium. I have a block here and a block here and I stick them together with some kind of you know peanut butter or some kind of some kind of substance that really makes them conduct heat between the boundary here very easily so that the if this has a, a higher temperature than this or if this has a higher temperature than this the heat can be transferred back and forth. I mean you all know heat transfer sounds like a complicated thing. You all know about heat transfer. I mean it's the same thing that happens when you you know you take something hot out of a microwave and it's very hot. Well it sits in the in the room and it distributes its heat back into the room. It's transferring its heat back into the room. That's heat transfer. That's all that is. So if we put two things together and we let them sit a long time, eventually they will be at the same uh, uh, temperature. So these guys we say are in thermal equilibrium, which means, let me make a B here, okay, this means no heat is transferred. Okay, it means when you first stick them together, yes, they might be at different temperatures. They might then transfer heat between them, but after a long time, that's not happening any longer, okay? That's all it means. 
So that's one of these bodies. Now what if we had this body C? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to make C the same exact color as what I had here. So if I have C like this, okay, same exact body, uh, and later in the day I bring that guy into thermal equilibrium with this guy here, which is body B, same exact thing. We say these things are in thermal equilibrium, which means that they are, uh, there's no heat transfer. Okay, so let's read the theorem here, or the law here. If bodies A and B are separately in thermal equilibrium with a third body C, here's the third body C, we put them, we wedge them together separately to body A and B, and they're all in thermal equilibrium with the same body C, then A and B are in thermal equilibrium with each other. Okay? So what that would mean, if I were to draw it then, if I'm going to use the right colors, is that would mean that body A, which is this blue one here, is also in thermal equilibrium with body B. Okay? with body B. That's all it means. And these guys are in thermal equilibrium. Okay. So before, you know, we get into talking about this theorem more, let's apply this to the real world, okay? If I had this pen right here, and I said, this pen is at 10 degrees, let's say, okay? And let's say this sheet of paper is at 10 degrees, let's say. How do I know that they're at 10 degrees? Because I have a thermometer, right? That I measure the temperature here and then measure here, the temperature here. The block C is basically defining a thermometer. That's basically what this is about. That's the title of the section is thermometers and temperature scales. It turns out that thermometers use the zero law of thermodynamics to define what a thermometer is. And we take it for granted. It, it seems so obvious. Why would you even write this on the board? Well, it's, it's like in the beginning of mathematics. You, you define one plus one as two, very simple stuff and you move on from there and you get into the more complicated material. Same thing here. All this is saying is that if I take this guy and I prove it's at the same temperature as this other thing over here, this other block C or this thermometer, okay, I remove him and I put him and I verify he's at the exact same temperature as that thermometer over there, then because they're both in thermal equilibrium, which means the same temperature as this third body over here, since I proved that they're both in thermal equilibrium with a third body, C, then I have proven their thermal equilibrium with each other. If A is equal to B and B is equal to C, then A is equal to C. That's all it is, okay? It's not a very complicated thing. But when you write it down and you have thermal equilibrium and, and everything else, it sounds complicated, but all it's defining is basically the concept of a thermometer, that you can design a device that you could then measure the temperatures of all things around the room, and if you see that they're all the same, then you've proven that there would be in thermal equilibrium with each other should you move them together. If I take A with B and put them together, it's just proving that they're at the same temperature, that there's got not going to be any heat transfer between them because I've already proven that they're effectively at the same temperature as a third body. Okay? That's really all it says. That's, that's what the zeroth law of, of thermodynamics is really saying, is that you can invent something called a thermometer. Okay? So what we're going to do next is we're going to take this uh, concept and we're going to go a little bit farther with it.